the name of God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Amen. Amen. God of all time, we praise you in this season of autumn. As we journey together through a new season of our life. This is a season of change and transformation. And we pray the same might be true for us and our lives. Creator God, just as the towering trees in this season lose their crisp golden leaves, we pray that we too might lose those things which burden us and weigh us down. As many beautiful flowers rest and prepare to bloom again in the spring, we pray that we too might appreciate the gift of rest and renewal. As temperatures plunge and icy paths begin to glisten, we pray that you might create in us warm and open hearts to both strangers and friends. As the orange and red flames of the bonfire burns, set our hearts alight with a passion for your name in this season. Holy and eternal God, God of all beauty seen and unseen, as we bring our hearts before you this day, we are eager to trust in your promises, that you are the God who journeys with us through seasons of change, rest and renewal, and that we will trust in you, our maker and protector. Amen. Amen. Amos 9 verses 5 to 15. The Lord God of hosts, he who touches the earth and it melts, and all who live in it mourn, and all of it rises like the Nile and sinks again like the Nile of Egypt, who builds his upper chambers in the heavens, and founds his vault upon the earth, who calls for the waters of the sea, and pours them out upon the surface of the earth. The Lord is his name. Are you not like the Ethiopians to me, O people of Israel, says the Lord? Did I not bring Israel up from the land of Egypt, and the Philistines from Kaphtor, and the Arameans from Kerr. The eyes of the Lord God are upon the sinful kingdom, and I will destroy it from the face of the earth, except that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, says the Lord. For lo, I will command and shake the house of Israel among the nations, as one shakes with a sieve, that no pebble shall fall to the ground. All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword, who say, Evil shall not overtake or meet us. On that day I will raise up the booth of David that is fallen and repair its breaches, raise up its ruins and rebuild it as in days of old, in order that they may possess the remnant of Edom and all the nations who are called by my name, says the Lord who does this. The time is surely coming, says the Lord, when one who ploughs shall overtake the one who reaps and the treader of grapes the one who sows the seed. The mountains shall drip with sweet wine, and all the hills shall flow with it. I will restore the fortunes of my people Israel, and they shall rebuild the ruined cities and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and drink their wine, and they shall make gardens and eat their fruit. I will plant them upon their land, and they shall never again be plucked up out of the land that I have given them, says the Lord your God. Philippians chapter 3 and we're going to begin at verse 13. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on towards the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. Let those of us then who are mature be of the same mind. And if you think differently about anything, this too God will reveal to you. Only let us hold fast to that to what we have attained. Brothers and sisters, join in imitating me and observe those who live according to the example you have in us. For many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. I have often told you of them, and now I tell you even with tears, their end is destruction. Their God is the belly and their glory is in their shame. Their minds are set on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven. And it is from there that we are expecting a saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. 
He will transform the body of our humiliation so that it may be conformed to the body of his glory by the power that also enables him to make all things subject to himself. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I thought, oh, this is exciting. We're going to a book that we haven't done before at morning prayer. And then by the end, I thought, yeah, we don't mind never doing Amos again, actually. <laughs> um, but I think as you started reading it, um, particularly when it talks about the Nile and, and Egypt, I, I was thinking about where we are now as a nation and where we've been since lockdown. So um, obviously this is kind of about death and then restoration. Mm. Uh, and I was think, thinking about how as, as a nation, um, Egypt would have been mourning. You, you know, they go through some, some hardships in the Old Testament. Mm. Um, and so collectively, they would be in this period of, of mourning and a real struggle. Um, uh, and how actually at the moment, I feel that as a country, we haven't quite recognised that sense of mourning and real loss for all those people who have lost their lost their lives because of coronavirus. Mm. And I think that as a nation, we well, we should be in this period of, of mourning and recognising actually this is a really substantial loss of, of people, um, you know, and, and wrestling with that, but, but trusting that restoration will come. Mm -hmm. uh, so I suppose that was the message that stood out for me, that kind of collective mourning, but then somehow collective hope as well, that although things are really, really rubbish right now and we're struggling with loss, and everything's turned upside down, the best is yet to come. Mm. You know, we will see mm. some sense of hope. I Absolutely. Hope. And, and Amos, I think, I'm not 100% sure, but I think he's just about pre-exile. Okay. So he's talking to, to Judah mm. just before, um, basically, that the, they're overrun and, and taken off to Babylon. Mm. And their, their, hope, their nation is destroyed. So it, it's looking at it from that point of view as well, of, of him saying, actually... We, we know that where we are as a country is in a really, really not a good place. Mm -hmm. um, and, and this is going to happen as a result. And it, they, they apportion the blame to God. As, as I've said before, I'm, I'm not entirely convinced that it's God doing these things necessarily. Mm -hmm. But God may be using them for a lesson in some way. Yeah. And, and so saying that actually this destruction that's about to come, the fact that your, your way of life is about to be turned on its head and overthrown, um, is going to cost you a lot. It's going to be painful, mm, and it, mm. it's it's really as a result of the way you've treated one another yeah. and the way you've lived in the world. And I, th I think, in some ways, again, looking at the virus and the way that it's spread across the world, hundred percent not to say God sent the no, virus to judge no. us, but saying that actually, the reason it happened, the way it happened, the way it spread, is a lot to do with actually the way that we are, the way that humanity is in the world. The fact that we have these, this abusive creation that allows such a th such things as those those Chinese markets where it started. Mm. The fact that we're so obsessed with economy and capitalism that for a long time we refused to shut anything down because of the economy meant that it spread much mm. faster and further than it might have needed to. And so it's saying that perhaps some of the some of the things that that have happened have actually been consequences that we're dealing with the way the world is and that's not mm. to in any way blame any of the people that have died not for a no, second no, of course. but to recognize that actually as, as a human race we cause a lot of pain to one another directly and indirectly as, as we're seeing at the moment and so as you say recognizing <coughs> that period of mourning and using it as a time to to not just weep but to maybe think about what some of those lessons we might need to learn are yeah, that's powerful, actually. So time of reflection in and among that um, mm. and remembering uh, and that sense of story still, I think, flows through this as we talk about different people um, who are obviously significant uh, of the time, really. So, yeah, I thought it was, yeah, it's a confusing reading, but mm. <laughs> we're getting something from it. A so. lot of the prophets are. Yeah. But, but, yeah. That, but that's the point of, of the prophets, isn't it? To say, to actually call mm -hmm. out where, mm -hmm. where there are things wrong and where there are and where things need to change and say, look, yeah. this is going to happen if we don't sort this out. And Israel didn't sort this out, and so they were exiled. Mm -hmm. But then that final section is is making that point that this isn't all there's going to be. No. 
it's not always going to be a downward slope. But there is hope and there is goodness to come because God is everything. Yeah, yeah. Anything else stuck out to you? Or should we move on to Philippians? Um, we can move on. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I shut the Bible, so give me a second. <laughs> okay. Right, yeah. right, the one thing that stuck out with me from Philippians, um, verse 21. He will transform the body of our humiliation so that it may be conformed to the body of his glory. So I think I, I'm making the decision to never go to the gym again. Um, <laughs> because this body of humiliation is going to be conformed by God's glory at some point soon. So just pray instead of exercising. Yeah, I'm just going to pray really, really hard. <laughs> Work, works for me. <laughs> But it was quite a, a nice reading, I thought. Mm, and then um, mm. yesterday in at Press Switch, we thought about what it means to to have an identity that is in Christ. Mm. And I think this reading kind of really reflected some of the things that we talked about there, particularly that bit in verse 20 that talks about our citizenship being Yeah, I love that phrase. And then yeah. again, thinking about where we are as a world mm. now and thinking about how nationalised We've, we've become in some ways of thinking actually so much of what we need to do is about our country yeah. about looking after our own ourselves mm -hmm. people who are like who are people who are from where we're from and and saying that actually as christians that's simply not right mm -hmm. but saying that actually i mean in the colossians reading we had yesterday he said um set your mind on heavenly things on things above and in saying our citizenship is heaven, in heaven, recognizing that actually there's something different mm. for us. Mm. That actually we're all united as one nation, if you like, across the world, rather than saying actually I've been born on this particular bit of land, and so therefore that's the mm. most important bit of land. Yeah, God doesn't really conform to our borders, does he? No. Thankfully, um, but yeah, I was thinking, you know, obviously Amos, we've just said about that hope. Of restoration and, and that hope that the best is yet to come and I suppose as I read that kind of citizenship of, of he in heaven it, it's a comfort almost it's a hope hope filled comfort mm. if you like that even though um, things are really messy here and complex and, and I think for those people as well who have, who have passed away and those sorts of things mm. there's that comfort isn't there in citizenship in heaven absolutely um, so yeah, it's a, it's a nice passage actually. Mm. It's not as bad as I expected. Look at you, like um, in a passage. From I know, uh, but for many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Mm. Um, that's a really, I mean, that's calling it out, isn't it? Mm, that's absolutely. a really powerful. What what I really like about that verse is mm. well, not just Paul saying, look, people are living directly opposed to, mm. to this, but also the way in which he says, and now I tell you, even with tears. Yeah. That end is destruction. Yeah. So naturally, I mean, I don't, I don't think we often get the idea of Paul as someone who really had much compassion for people who got things wrong and did things wrong. <laughs> it feels a lot of the time like he's a bit kind of blood and thunder. Mm -hmm. And actually, if people have, have, have lived as enemies of the cross, they bought it on themselves. So tough. I'm just going to yeah, tell them about brutal. it. Yeah, it's brutal. But actually, hearing that, I tell you, even with tears, that their end is destruction just that emotion actually he does care about people mm, which is mm. quite a nice kind of revelation of the humanity of Paul as well I think <laughs> yeah I really don't like using the phrase kind of saving so saved and saving souls and that sort of thing mm. but I think it's definitely a definitely one that can be applied here that actually as Christians we should each have a passion for everybody to know about mm. God and about God's love for them and, and, you know, the cross of Christ, really. And we should want everybody to know that to the point where it actually hurts when people reject it and, yeah. and say no. Uh, and it hurts deeper than just us feeling a bit embarrassed that we asked and didn't get our own way and the answer that we want. Mm. But but actually, as, as Paul does, finding tears in, in the fact that, you know, this is their soul and this mm. is their relationship with God and, and they're rejecting that and that, that hurts. Mm, absolutely. Mm. And it comes back to that question of, of almost kind of what we believe, mm -hmm. and and do we, if if we have a faith that has has changed our lives, why would we not want that for mm -hmm. other people? Mm -hmm. Why would why would we not actually <clears throat> really be sad and regret it that other people haven't had that same life changing encounter? Yeah. 
and unless we look at our faith as simply an extra tag on to life, a little hobby, isn't it? Yeah, yeah and and, it, and if that's the case, then I I, I struggle to, to see that in scripture mm. really. Mm. Actually, that that transforming power that that can be a big one off event as it was for Paul, but can be a journey across many many years as it was yeah. for the disciples learning with Jesus. It doesn't matter how it's happened, but recognizing that if we've had that transformation, how can we not mm. want that for other people? Mm. So let's pray. Holy and gracious God, we thank you that at the start of this new week, we can once more gather as this online community to pray for those things that are on our hearts and minds, for the people that we love and care for, for the situations that challenge and upset us, and for your world, created in beauty and abundance, but abused and mistreated so often. Lord, as we hear those challenging words from Amos, those words that talk of pain and heartache caused by destruction, we think of all those places around the world where there is still pain and destruction where lives are lost, homes destroyed and livelihoods ruined by war and conflict, oppression and injustice. And Lord, once more we know that these ways are not your ways, but we cling on to those words of hope, those words of restoration, that promise that there is goodness to come, that Christ is our saviour and does reign with you and that one day there will be a new world, new heaven and a new earth with no more pain and no more mourning. Lord, we long for that in this world of fear and heartbreak, this world of anxiety and worry. We long for an inbreaking of your peace from the Prince of Peace. And God, today we pray for our nation here and the, the leaders of our country as they seek to make important decisions and as people wait anxiously and nervously to hear any news of further lockdown restrictions. God, we pray for business owners and for those in the hospitality industry as they lose sleep about the future of their livelihoods. We pray for them and their families. We pray that they will feel supported and upheld, loved and wanted in their communities. And God, as we're seeing COVID cases rising and hospital admissions increasing as a result. We pray again for NHS staff, for tired doctors and nurses doing their best to care for patients. And God, we just pray that everybody in this country will find the compassion to keep themselves safe and keep others safe as well to ensure that NHS staff are not overrun. And Lord, this weekend, as we remembered Mental Health, World Mental Health Day, we once more pray for all of those who are struggling in any way with their emotional, mental or physical health or spiritual health. Lord, during this time of the pandemic, it's been even more difficult to find support and care where it's needed. Those feelings of loneliness, isolation and anxiety have been amplified for so many. And as restrictions seem to be getting greater, those feelings may be returning. And so, Lord, we pray for all of those people who struggle. 
We pray that they may find the care and support that they need. We pray that they may find that listening ear. And we pray that each one of us would be willing to reach out when we see a person in need. That we would be someone who can listen and help wherever it may be needed. And so together at the start of this new week, we pray for those people who are on our hearts and minds today. We name out loud and pray for David and Janet, for Sue and Clive, for Anne and Rob, for Frida, for Sonny's family and friends, for Susanna, Lynn and family, for Alan, for Rose, for Michelle, Tim and their family, for Sandra and Paul, for Susan and Nigel, for Jill, for Phil and Ali and their family, for Dave and his family, for Maddie. And today we pray for Lincoln's family and friends, especially for Faye. We pray that all of these people, God, and those that we hold close in our hearts will feel your presence closely with them today. That they will feel flooded by your peace and your love. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. In all of the concerns, brokenness and heartbreak in this world, we cling on to you, God, as our anchor. Just as the trees hope their leaves will appear again, we hope also in you, our Creator. In all of the anxiety and stress of this season before us, we keep our eyes fixed on you. Just as the robin hops and flies seeking direction, we are guided by the spirit of wisdom. In all of the coldness and darkness of this autumn season, we seek your light and your love. Just as we must prepare with our coats and scarves, we remember also our armour of God. In all the death and loss of autumn, help us to remember and trust in your promise of new life. Just as flowers will bloom again in all their beauty and splendour, we hope in your full glory yet to be revealed. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked. Or take the path that sinners tread, or sit in the seat of the scoffers. But their delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water. Which yield their fruit in its season and their leaves do not wither. In all that they do, they prosper. So we all go in thankfulness, with words of praise on our lips, in awe of our Creator God, by whose hands we enjoy this world's beauty and splendour. In, in the, the name, name of God, God Creator, Creator, Redeemer and Sustainer. Amen.